everybody, welcome to Albion's YouTube channel. Uh, today's video is about templating and the importance of templating. We use templates um, every day in Albion. Uh, we get templates in from our saddle fitters. So the templates are basically a drawing of uh, a horse's back. Um, and we recommend that templates are taken every six months or so, depending on how much your horse changes shape. Um, and it basically is a drawing which shows the changes of the horse's back. So if you've just bought a new horse um, and you get the, uh, the back templated, it may be in three months time, you get the saddle fitter out again and they do a new drawing of your horse's back and your horse will probably have changed shape quite considerably. And then if you've got a young horse, they may develop um, and so their template will constantly be changing as well. Um, we always recommend that you keep a record of your horse's template so that you can see whether the changes are, se are seasonal um, or due to work pattern changes or dietary changes as well. So I'm Het, I work in the office, I look after all of the special template orders and these come through from our saddle fitters. So. For example, Sophie would go out to the yard and she would send the information across to myself at the office and we'd process the order together from there. So Sophie, um, what got you into saddle fitting in the first place? Um, so I got into saddle fitting while I was at college. So I was studying equine management. Um, I had a quite significant injury so I couldn't get employed to, do, to be a rider. So I started going into other areas into the equine industry. Um, I really got involved in saddle fitting because I did a mini dissertation on horses performance and rider performance in regards to their tack. So we did a little bit of analysis on how the horse's way of going could be improved through correct um, tack fitting um, and how also the rider could be improved by correct tack fitting. So from there I got a job as an apprenticeship um, and then went through the Society of Master Saddlers to get qualified and obviously I've now been doing saddle fitting for over 10 years. So we're going to go through templates today. Um, so first thing, we've got the horse stood on as level ground as we can find today. So this is called a true drop. So we're measuring how much depth there is um, from the horse's wither to further back in the back. Rosie here hasn't actually got that much of a drop. Um, so she's not particularly high withered, but you see she has got quite a shapely back, even though she's quite broad. Um, so how we would take a true drop is we would measure from A, so our first line here, um, depending on the horse's back length is how far back the true drop would go. And then you can see where, <laughs> when she's starting to be nice and level through the spirit level here. And then this would actually measure how much drop um, Rosie has. So we've got A, B, C, D and E to template, which we're gonna go and draw up on the template pad now. Um, when we template, usually if we're not doing a true drop, this is when the second line is, is relevant for us. So it would be A, B and C, two inches behind the scapula, four inches behind the scapula, and then the T18, so the horse's last thoracic rib. T, D for true drop. than um, other companies because it just builds up a better picture of the horse's back and for me sat in the office trying to imagine what yeah what that is on paper looks yeah. like at the in the field like once this template's finished you'll be able to see a proper 3d drawing of the horse's back this is Rosie's template, so we've just done a full lot of templates, uh, including her true drop, so we can actually see the true drop from here um, and actually how much she drops. Um, so this is the left side and this is the right side. Um, so when we send this off to the factory, they can get a true picture of her actual shape. 
It's a precision fitting templating machine. So basically we can recreate the horse's back profile and take the template, we can build the horse's back onto this machine and then we can try saddles, trees on it just to see if they're going to work. We can only do this if we get all the information on the template. So this template has got all the um, temp template lines 10 centimetres down the horse's back. It's got the longitudinal profile and also we like to just check photographs of the horse's back as well. So that's the horse's um, wither, that's the tree line and that goes along the horse's back. So I'm going to go um, to this one here. So I'm going to put that measurement onto, so that's the B one. Let's see, one, two, three, six. So we've got obviously a ruler here. One, two, three, four. So this is the true drop, drop basically. So now. So we've done that, the longitudinal, now we're going to start here and do this line. So A is the first one. The only thing that this um, won't do is if the horse is asymmetrical, um, we can only work to the wider side. So this, this um, machine is perfectly symmetrical So and we only produce symmetrical trees. So if you've got any asymmetry there, it will have to be um, adjusted by flock or shims. And again, we can look at this once the saddle's been created to see if there's any gaps that need filling. So on this flex curve, actually, you can see that we do uh, mark a centre line, near side, off side, and we mark the 10 centimetre intervals as well down. So they're really useful and easy to work with. Just put the centre mark on. on this template because you've got the lines the a line is pretty symmetrical it's intersecting at the same place and then if you go to look further back 10 centimeters further back with the b line on the near side it's narrower than the off side and then as you go down the horse's back it gets even more apparent so near side you've sort of got half a centimeter through that square and this one is right up here, so you've got half a centimetre difference. And then when we get back to here, you've got a whole centimetre difference, near side to off side. And then still not symmetrical at the back. So basically what you see on this piece of paper is what we've drawn on the precision fit machine. So now we try a saddle on to see how it fits. So if it's a particularly diff difficult horse, 
we try trees on, we try models on, we'd see what we think that we've got that's suitable. If it's something that's had a lot of models tried on it and it's still becoming, a, it still is a problem, um, we'd sort of go in depth and we'd look at what we can do for it. This particular one, yeah, it's asymmetrical. We would have to look, uh, get the saddle fitter to check the flocking when it goes out. But other than that, it's pretty standard. Um, it shouldn't be a problem. So um, we would send this through production. We'd get the saddle made and then we would set this up on the machine like we just have. And then once the saddle's completed, we can try, we try the finished saddle onto this machine and check that it all looks right before it goes out to the fitter. Check that it's in balance, check that there's contact all the way through. So we've made the saddle and we're now just checking it on the um, jig. Um, it's sitting nicely in balance and if we look underneath at the contact down the panel, um, it is showing good contact, there's no gaps. The only thing I would say is the angle's not quite right here, so we will just send it back to the saddle fitter, uh, the saddler sorry, to um, double check the flocking, see if we can get that contact a bit better. Thanks so much for watching, we hope you've enjoyed the video and we'll see you again next month for our new topic.